Hi, my name is Stephen Pereira. And I'm Katie Guys. We work for the Natural Resource Management Team, or NRM Team, in the Central West Local Land Services. Our role is to support landholders manage their natural resources, including soil, water, vegetation and animals, both native and domestic. We help landholders by providing funding for on-gram works, for example fencing and alternate water to manage grazing and preserve native vegetation. We also run specialised training and workshops, either face-to-face -face or online like this one. So join us today as we explore using the Euclid tool to identify Euclids. Why identify trees? When people are looking to improve native vegetation on their property, it is usually by planting trees and shrubs or protecting existing vegetation. So to make sure that the correct trees and shrubs are planted, it is important to know what plant community type is there now or was originally present. Plant communities are groups of trees, shrubs, grasses and ground cover that are naturally found together. They're found in specific geographic areas defined by soil type, rainfall and position in the landscape. Plant communities are often defined by dominant tree species such as eucalypts. Once you have identified these trees in their associated plant community, it will assist you in targeting trees, shrubs and ground cover for regeneration and planting activities. Having a range of tree species of various ages and sizes within the plant community will provide a diversity of habitat features for wildlife. There are over 900 eucalypt species found in Australia, 250 species in New South Wales and over 80 of these are found within the Central West Local Land Services area. Eucalypts play an important role within our natural environment. They provide shelter in the form of hollows, cracks and crevices in the trunks and limbs. They are also a food source for many of our native animals, some of which are a threatened species. Although you might know your local trees, it is often difficult to identify trees out of your local area or difficult to distinguish between species, like Eucalyptus microcarpa, or commonly called grey box, and Eucalyptus albans, which is commonly called white box. Local land services or staff are often asked to help identify trees, shrubs and ground cover. To help us do that, we often refer to identification books and use programs such as Euclid. Most people use common names referring to trees in their local areas. These names may vary from one location to the next. For example, Greybox can refer to Eucalyptus microcarpa or Eucalyptus woolsiana, depending whereabouts in New South Wales you live. Throughout this webinar, we use scientific name as well as a common name for the species. It is good if you can become familiar with some of the scientific names that are common in your area. The Euclid program has been around for quite some time now. Euclid offers an easy to use platform with a step-by-step -step key to help in the identification of Euclid species. The comprehensive fact sheets and glossary make it an ideal tool for both our staff and yourself to use. You can use the app on your phone or tablet out in the paddock or use a desktop version back in the office. Anyone can use Euclid software the desktop and phone version are free to use. The tablet version will cost you to be downloaded from your selected app store. Today we're going to use the desktop computer version so that you can see all the tabs at once. The size of the viewing screen is really the only difference between the computer and mobile versions. Using the mobile app, you will only be able to see one tab at a time. This is the home screen. This is where you can get access to the guide glossary, fact sheets and other useful information. The identify key on the left hand side of your screen will start you using Euclid. 
The glossary is a great tool to help you as you move through Euclid. Whether you are just starting out with plant ID, or even if you are experienced in identifying plants, this is a really useful tool in helping understand some of the scientific and specialist terms that may be used throughout the app. Just a handy tip, if you are using the desktop version of Euclid, open another tab on your computer to find the words in the glossary. This will make sure that the features you have already selected will remain in the search. This is a really important page. Have a read through this before starting. It explains the functions of the icons and the steps to move through Euclid. When heading out into the field, it really helps to be prepared. Start by getting a field kit together. This may include a good camera or smartphone, a tape measure, bags for collecting samples, marking textures for labelling, a notebook for recording details, identification books to refer to, and secateurs, long-handled ones or a long-handled saw for accessing fruit and nuts on high branches. Also, take your tablet or phone with Euclid app loaded. A sturdy plastic tub to hold all the equipment and samples is handy to have. Okay now we're, okay, now we're here. To use the Euclid app um, efficiently, you need to collect some data in the paddock. So you can take photos of the bark. Uh, if you can take photos of the leaves or take some samples of the leaves, it would be really good. If you can get some juvenile and adult leaves, that's even better. And then also some samples of seed pods and the fruit buds, which are the the, um, the early stages of, of, of the fruit buds, uh, the seed pods. So while you can do this on your iPhone, it's quite good enough for the bark. To get the smaller detail of the leaves and especially the upper branches, it's sometimes good to have a bit better camera with a telephoto um, a zoom lens so you can actually get more. But also while we're here, uh, as you can see around the base of the tree, there's actually quite a few branches and um, leaves and hopefully seed pods down here. So that actually makes it our, our job a lot easier to collect this, this stuff and take it back. To Taking photos. What do you need to take photos of? Um, you need a photo of the whole tree. Um, close up of the bark is excellent. Uh, you need a close up of the branches. Look to see if there's any change in the bark, any, you know, like rough to smooth, especially on the ends of the branches. We need photos of the leaves, the fruit and the buds if possible. And while you're out in the field, check your surroundings. Where's the tree in the landscape? Is it on the hill? Is it on the slope? Is it down in the creek line? Is it on a rocky ridge? And also, are there any associated trees and shrubs that you can identify? These could all be determining factors in identifying your tree. Let's get started. Click on the Identify button to get started. Euclid breaks the screen into four windows so that you can clearly see what has been selected and the number of species left. The features available window on the top left of your screen is the active window where you will choose features. There are 120 features to select from. The features chosen window underneath this is the window that will save your selections. On the right hand side of your screen, the entities remaining window shows the number of eucalypts left to be selected from. Below this, in the entities discarded window, shows the eucalypts that don't fit within your selected features. Firstly, select your state. Next, select your botanical region. If you're unsure of this, click on the map to zoom in. Select features from the data and specimens collected in the paddock. If you come to a feature that you have not collected data for, simply move on to the next feature. This section also contains some scientific specialist words. Don't forget you can check the glossary for an explanation. Clicking on the picture will also give you clues on the information needed. As you select features, the number in the entities remaining window will change. Keep track of your selections in the features chosen window. You will continue to update as you add your data. Finding the right species. Once you have entered all of the, your data, check the remaining entities window. This will give you an indication of the species that you are looking at. If you are lucky, 
and have managed to get down to one species, congratulations. It is highly likely that your selection is correct. If you have more than one entity remaining and you are unsure of what it could be, then click on the photo and it will take you to a series of photos that are connected to that species. This will give you more information to compare to. Also, clicking on the page icon between the name and the image will take you to the associated fact sheet. The fact sheet will, will provide you with a detailed information and photos regarding this particular species. It will show the distribution map and it will also give you information to narrow down your search. So now we'll run through the key and hopefully when we get to the end of it, we'll have a white box or eucalyptus albums. So we hit the identify key to start and we go to New South Wales and within New South Wales, we're in the central west slopes. And remember, if you want to, you can click on the, on the box and it'll come out and show you exactly where you are. It's just a handy feature to get you a bit closer. Okay, so the next thing we have collected is the habit because when we looked at the tree, we can see it's a single stem, and so it actually is a tree rather than a mallee or a shrub. From there, we go to bark persistence, and ours is a very much um, smooth on the upper branches, so it's partly rough. From there, we went to rough bark type, and it's a very classic box tree, so we click box. And the next step we go to is the color, which is gray, and yep, and we can see that the entities remaining are clicking down quite nicely, so we're down to 11 um, from 900, so we're going very well. The next samples we collected, uh, sorry, on the branch, bark branch can, uh, on canopy, greater than 8, eight centimetres, as we said it was smooth, because those upper branches were smooth, not rough. We went to our next sample, which is the leaf shape, um, leaf samples, and the leaf blade shape, which is ovate. So when you can scroll through those, the leaf shapes, um, click on ovate. And then we also had leaf length. So we measured those, took an average, and you type in 12 centimetres for our average, and enter. And then we had leaf width as well. Again, we took an average of 3.5 centimetres. Um, so as you're going, you continue to scroll down to find the next feature you have collected. In our case, it was a fruit shape. So you need to just keep looking um, and see what you have collected and what you haven't. And fruit shape is there. And the one we, our fruit, was urn shaped. So these are the mature fruits. And as you can see, we have one entity left, which is eucalyptus albums, which we were hoping for. You click on the little note icon and it'll take you through to the fact sheet. And you can go through there and you click through the, the photos and make sure that's exactly what you have. Click on the description and make sure it all lines up with what the, the samples have and it makes sense. And there you have it, you've worked through Euclid. Thank you for joining us with our Euclid webinar today and we hope you enjoy using the Euclid app. For further information, contact your local land services office.